If you are struggling with lasting behavior change, with keeping your behavior sustainable, or with creating a new behavior that lasts, then this is what I want to tell you. We are moving on to step number three of how to create a behavior, a new behavior, a lasting behavior that actually is going to stick. My journey, as you know, I started with health and fitness. So I started as a personal trainer, behavior change specialist, holistic health coach, and all of these things led me toward the path of understanding more our unconscious mind and what it is that is actually driving our behavior. And so for me, you know, all these different credentials or things I have behind my name, including hypnosis and mental and emotional release and all these different things that I have learned, it was actually just my own personal journey to understand one myself better, but also to be able to help help my clients to achieve the lasting change that I had achieved and also to do it in a way that was easier and faster and not so painful to achieve. And so it took me on my own journey and then I wanted to help others with it. But the, the number one thing that I haven't covered yet, so first and foremost, when we're talking about lasting change, we're talking about observing your behavior. Step number one was just to observe your behavior. Step number two was to understand and get to know the limiting beliefs that you're operating from because your beliefs are what drive your thoughts and your thoughts drive the emotion and then the emotion drives the behavior that you either do or do not want. And so step number one and two we've covered. Step number three is actually looking at not just the limiting beliefs, but the negative emotions that you are carrying around within you, your body, your mind. And here's the key, consciously or unconsciously. We all have an emotion that we can relate with where it is very apparent and in our face, like something happens and you feel angry towards someone or a situation or something happens and you feel sadness and you know that you're kind of sad about that thing, right? Those are some apparent emotions. But what about the emotions that happened either early on in life or in some cases just well before even you would think to consciously absorb or even know how to process those emotions. So being very, very young or even generationally, right? Some things that have happened that you might have carried down or been passed down, um, negative emotions that were passed down from your parents or grandparents. This is a thing, this happens. So whether you agree with that or not, Either way, it is proven that negative emotions that are stored in our body or in our unconscious, and when I say unconscious, think of it like a virus, right? You can have a virus that you're carrying around, but you're not actively sick right now. But with the right conditions, if you get yourself to a certain place where maybe your immunity is weakened or you know, you're know you exposed to something different or you get too tired or or um, you know whatever it may be that tends to come to the surface, and then what happens? You get sick. The same is true of negative emotions in the body or in the unconscious. When we push them down, consciously or unconsciously, when we just stuff them down and we don't deal with them because either one we're not capable of dealing with them because we're so young or don't know how, or we just don't want to. Either way, they're still in the body. They still live there. So one of the biggest keys to creating lasting change that you are unaware of likely is to release negative emotions specifically on an unconscious level. And what I mean by that is if you can go to the root cause of why it is that you're still angry in the area of let's just say your body, you may not think that you are carrying, I certainly didn't. Think that I was carrying any anger or sadness or fear or guilt or shame or anything like that around my body and my weight. And yet the reality was I had some deep rooted, it went way, way, way back, frustration and anger and and so many different emotions that were tied to my body goals, were tied to just my physical body and the weight that I was carrying around. And on top of that, when we have these negative emotions, we tend to have negative driving goals. And what I mean by that is 
if you feel the need to lose weight and it's not 100% authentic to you because you want to feel better in your body, you want to feel more confident or have the energy that you want to have or, you know, clear your skin or whatever the thing is, it's not like 100% for you in a positive way temporarily the negative drivers, so having to lose weight for someone else or so that you don't feel bad at an event or that you look better on the vacation, but it's not a positive driver. It's like, ooh, I don't want to feel the pain. Pain can be a big motivator and it really works for a lot of people for a period of time. But we're not talking about a short period of time. We're talking about lasting change, something that you want to achieve and you want to sustain this behavior or this change. That you want a positive driver. Otherwise, when you take away the negative, when you take away, let's say, the person that you're trying to lose the weight for and suddenly they aren't there anymore, they're not in your life anymore or they're gone or where's your motivation? Or the event, you take the event away and suddenly it's done. Where's your motivation? And so when I talk about the positive drivers, part of that is removing the negativity. Part of that is removing the negative emotions that are tied to you wanting to achieve that goal. And so it's not just the negative emotions, but it's that driving force of why you also are trying to achieve the goals that you are. And this goes in business. This goes in a relationship. All of it is applied. But for this sake, we're talking about the body. And so the number one thing that we haven't talked about yet that you want to pay attention to are the negative emotions that you are storing. So there are a few ways that you can actually do this. Number one is I've provided some journal prompts. So if you want those journal prompts, let me know. Um, that are going to just help you become aware of maybe where the negative emotions are um, and what they're stemming from. But the best way and the fastest way to do it, and in my opinion, the most effective way is what I do for myself and with my clients, which is using our breakthrough program to actually go through and uproot all of the negative emotions that are tied the strongest negative emotions. So I'm talking about anger, sadness, fear, guilt, you know, any, anything that's coming up for you, even sometimes anxiety, um, all of that is looped in, including your limiting beliefs that you have around the goal that you have set. So all of that, when we can wipe all that out, and it's not a long, hard process, it's actually incredibly fast and effective. Most people come out of the process feeling entirely different. And then they start to second guess and go, how could that possibly be gone. I feel that it's gone. I know that it's gone. My behavior is gone, but that is incredible how fast, but the answer that I want to give you. So if you're, if you're feeling like, well, I'm not going to be able to go through a whole program and do this, or even the two days that it takes to do it, like that's okay. Because in an instant, in an instant, you can choose to not be mad at someone. Can't you? In an instant, you can choose to forgive someone. In an instant, you can choose a different state, can't you? You've done it before. You've had this happen before. So it's not so much that it's hard to release the negative emotion as it is the buildup to get to a place where you are in the willingness to release the negative emotion. So it's, again, it's not challenging to do, but what helps people in our program to actually release it is to understand it first. Sometimes when you understand something and where it came from, it allows you and gives you more permission to feel comfortable letting it go. When you have time to sort of maybe process it a little bit, even consciously um, or on an unconscious level, just kind of reframing that for you can help you go, okay, I'm ready to be done with this. It's, I get that it's not serving me and it's not bringing me any closer to my goals. In fact, it's bringing me further away. So this is such a crucial step that so few people understand. And again, I didn't know this as a personal trainer, a holistic health coach. I didn't know studying you know, health and fitness that this was such a big driver for people's behavior, but it is. And it is one of the best things that you could do if you are looking for lasting change. So if you're my quick fix people, which I was, always looking for the next thing, 
this is this is not for you because you want lasting change this is for you you actually want to change your behavior and over time the emotion can be gone in an instant we've done it we do it every day and yet you may need some time to kind of catch up. You may need some time for others around you to sort of catch up with this new version of you who doesn't have these things holding you back, these limiting beliefs or negative emotions. And that sometimes can take us time. And that's okay, because guess what we got? A little bit of time. If you add up all the times that you've tried quick fixes and they haven't quite worked out and then you're back to square one or even worse than when you started, you'd have a lot more time, wouldn't you? So what if instead of a quick fix, again, you actually did something that was incredibly rapid and fast, but you gave yourself that little bit of extra time to sort of assimilate and and sit with this and really allow yourself to step into this new version of you and let the old version go. What would happen if you tried a different approach? Because it seems, at least this was the question I had to ask myself, the things that I am doing are not working. They are not solving my problem. I am back to square one, if not worse, because then I was binge eating or then I would go back to this thing or swing the other direction and it just wasn't working for me. And so for me to find this, and I apply this in every single area of my life. I am not perfect, but I do apply it to not only my health and my fitness, but my relationships to my business in every area. So to recap, step number one, observe your behavior. Just put your lab coat on, observe yourself and what's going on. Step number two, identify the limiting beliefs. What are the beliefs or that dialogue that's coming up between you and yourself and the voices that you're hearing? Like what is that dialogue that you keep having come up or the beliefs that are coming up that are holding you back? And three are the negative emotions, like where they are guaranteed there. We all have them. We all store them. We could have had the most perfect life ever. You still got them. So no one is above this or below it. And even people we've taken through this process who've had terrible, you know, terrible, horrific things have happened and they have had success. And the reason they've had success is they were ready to let it go. They were ready to be done. They realized that the negative emotion is not serving them anymore. The fear, the guilt, the shame, the anger, the sadness. You know, When you're done with something, you're done. You know this because you've had this in your life before. And sometimes that physical weight that you're carrying is just a representation of the mental or emotional weight that you've been carrying around. I know this to be true for me. My clients have seen this to be true that once you resolve on the internal, the external then can fall in line. You will then see the difference in the external, in your weight, in your body, and even how you treat yourself and possibly others, right? So internal work will almost always come out in the external. And when you're not doing the internal work, you can see that come out in the external. And that's the biggest realization. Every single day, I notice if I don't practice what I preach, what I'm telling you, I have a completely different end result, physical result. So if my life or my body or relationship or my business feels chaotic or feels off or I'm not getting the results that I want, I always go to the internal and I understand what's driving my behavior. What is driving this end result that I have here? Can I reverse engineer that and go back to the root cause of what's causing me to stay stuck? What's causing me to not move forward? Where is this fear coming from? Where is this belief coming from? What is this behavior coming from, stemming from? What's the root cause? And so that's exactly what we do in our breakthrough program is we help you identify the root cause of each of these. We are so thorough with this and how to then move forward in a positive way so you have positive drivers instead of negative driving you, guiding you, and pulling you toward your end destination rather than pushing you, which is always temporary. So hopefully this was helpful. Let me know.